Greetings, I'm Dr. David Gersten. This video is my first question and answer video. For those of you who are new to this channel, I practice integrative psychiatry, which includes mind-body psychotherapy and amino acid therapy. I've practiced amino acid therapy for 35 years. Now, let's dive in to the first of 10 questions. Question one, what is the cofactor for L-tryptophan? P5P, or pyridoxal 5-phosphate, is the cofactor that activates the enzyme that converts tryptophan into serotonin. Question two, I tried GABA for depression and I felt terrible. My answer, GABA deficiency is only related to depression if a person experiences depression and anxiety. But I would not expect GABA to treat depression. Question three. Can I take all my amino acids at the same time? Good question. There are six amino acids that all compete to get into the brain at the same place. Those six are leucine, isoleucine, valine, phenylalanine, tyrosine, and tryptophan. If you are taking tyrosine or tryptophan, make sure to take them 45 to 60 minutes before or after meals. Do not take tyrosine and tryptophan at the same time. They'll be competing to get into the brain, and one of them is going to lose that race. You can take vitamins, minerals, and most amino acids all at one time, but don't take leucine, isoleucine, valine, or phenylalanine at the same time that you take tyrosine or tryptophan. Question four, can I just go get whey protein and be good to go? Whey protein is a complete protein with all the essential amino acids, and it's a good way to ingest enough protein. If someone is generally protein deficient, whey protein can help solve that problem. But the amount of each amino acid in whey protein is very small compared to the much higher doses needed in targeted amino acid therapy. If someone needs to boost serotonin, for example, the amount of tryptophan in whey protein won't do the job. Question five. I eat a lot of protein. I had an amino acid test that showed a lot of deficiencies. Why am I so deficient in amino acids if I eat enough protein? I think a lot of people have the same question. There are a few parts to the answer. First, if a person has a problem digesting or absorbing food, they will not be absorbing 100% of the amino acids they ingest. That's why I order a comprehensive digestive stool analysis as part of my baseline testing. With age, our GI tract produces less hydrochloric acid and less digestive enzymes. Those issues would cause decreased amino acid absorption into the body. A second issue has to do with stress, which causes us to burn through amino acids too fast. Infection, toxicity, inflammation, and chronic illness are also going to increase the demand for amino acids, thereby causing amino acid deficiencies. Question six. I'm taking 1,500 milligrams of tyrosine for depression and memory problems. It's helping, but can I safely take a higher dose? The answer to the question depends on your age, height, and weight. You can increase tyrosine. The highest dose I've recommended was five grams a day, but there has been research studies that used seven grams a day. If you push tyrosine higher, you need to match that by increasing P5P. Another issue has to do with thyroid function. Tyrosine makes dopamine and norepinephrine, but it also makes thyroxine, one of two thyroid hormones. If you are hyperthyroid, have thyroid lab work done before taking higher doses of tyrosine. If your T4 is elevated, don't take high doses of tyrosine. Question seven. I've heard that tryptophan can cause the serotonin syndrome. That is false. Tryptophan does not cause the serotonin syndrome. Symptoms of the serotonin syndrome include agitation, restlessness, headache, confusion, heavy sweating, diarrhea, rapid heart rate, and high blood pressure. It's caused by taking two or more serotonergic drugs, such as Prozac, Doxepin, or Trazodone, or by taking very high doses of one serotonergic drug. 
Taking one of these drugs plus tryptophan does not cause serotonin syndrome. Question eight, what's the difference between essential, non-essential, and conditionally essential amino acids? There are nine essential amino acids, and they are histidine, isoleucine, leucine, lysine, methionine, phenylalanine, threonine, tryptophan, and valine. Essential means that we must get them from our diet. The eight non-essential amino acids are made in the body. They include alanine, asparagine, aspartic acid, glutamic acid, glutamine, glycine, proline, and serine. When we are highly stressed, loaded with toxicity or infection, are recovering from surgery, or are dealing with chronic illness, the conditionally essential amino acids become essential. Conditionally essential amino acids include arginine, cysteine, tyrosine, and taurine. Question nine. How long will it take for me to start feeling benefits of amino acids? If you've been sick for 40 years, it's going to take longer than if you've only had health challenges for a few months. With that said, about 10% of people respond in the first month. 40% of people respond in one to two months. Another 40% respond in two to four months and 10% respond in four to six months. Every physical problem has mental causes and every mental problem has physical causes. If a person lives with unrelenting stress and unresolved trauma, their physiology will not completely heal until that person finds a much better way to reduce stress. And here's our last question, question 10. What makes amino acids better or safer than antidepressants? If amino acids increase dopamine and serotonin levels, then antidepressants do the same thing. And my answer is, this is a complex question. Actually, it's a question and a statement. First, the only way that neurotransmitters are made is from the nutrients that make them and those nutrients are amino acids. There's one exception, acetylcholine is not made from amino acids. With a nutraceutical grade brand, reactions to amino acids are mild and rare. Most drugs are made from oil or petroleum, so they are chemicals. They are not nutrients, they are not natural. Tryptophan is a nutrient. Most people think of the SSRIs like Prozac, Paxil, and Zoloft when they think of antidepressant medication. But the antidepressants before the SSRIs did not work at receptor sites. The SSRIs increased serotonin for only three weeks. After three weeks, serotonin levels permanently decrease. When the brain is given a drug, the brain puts on the brakes. In the case of the SSRIs, the brain starts making less serotonin and the brain reduces the number of serotonin receptor sites. SSRI stands for Selective Serotonin Reuptake Inhibitor, but the SSRIs are not selective. They also work at dopamine and norepinephrine receptor sites. They cause a reduction in serotonin, dopamine, and norepinephrine levels and a decrease in serotonin, dopamine, and norepinephrine receptor sites. 73% of women and 63% of men taking an SSRI suffer a decrease in libido. Decreased libido isn't just a personal problem. It's a marital problem. In addition to sexual numbing, there can be mental numbing from an SSRI. More severe side effects include suicide, homicide, akathisia, and mania. An excellent book that explains SSRI biochemistry and side effects is Talking Back to Prozac by Dr. Peter Bregan. If there is a choice between a good, safe, natural treatment like tryptophan or tyrosine versus a chemical drug that doesn't work well and has serious side effects, my decision is a very easy one. Hopefully, your decision will also be easy. Thank you for watching and listening. If you enjoyed this video, please click like and subscribe. If you have any questions that you would like me to address, 
I would love to read them and include my answers in future videos. You can write questions in the comments section or email me directly. My email is in the link below. Thank you again, have a great day, and keep your questions coming.